everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Oriwe podcast, the podcast that tells African stories. I'm Halima. And I'm Ceci. And today we're here to talk to you about the history of Yoruba language with our guest, Wale Ajiboye. Hi, Wale. Hi. Hi, Ceci. Hi, Alima. Hi, hi. Thank um, you so for coming. Oh, yeah, thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, my name is Wale Ajiboye, just like I said earlier. And I'm I'm a scrum master. I work in tech, actually, but you know I'm very very much drawn to my um tradition and culture, right? And I like to learn about history and talk about history as well. Um, for the different cultures all around the world. Um, I'm from Kogi State in Nigeria. And from the Yoruba speaking part of Kogi State, because we have like, like I think like three to four uh, different <laughs> tribes in Kogi State, uh, major tribes actually. So um, yeah, um, I speak my dialect and I love to speak Yoruba from time to time, although predominantly I speak English. And um, what else about myself? I love to swim. I like music. I can sing. Yeah, even though my voice probably doesn't sound like it, but um, yeah, that's 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 me. Thank you. In a in a in a brief. I really really love the detailed introduction. Damn, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, what part of Kogi are you from? Okay, so um, we call ourselves Okun people. Um, so. It's it's a, it's in a place called Kaba, right? Um, I don't know if I should specify the local government area, so you go and find my people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, um, the local government is Ijumu local government, and the name of the um, I don't want to use the word village now because we always use village, village, village all the time. Anyway, the place is called Iyamoye in Kogi State. Yeah. Mm, yes. yes, I feel like we're kind of related, um, Wally, because I'm from Kwara State. <laughs> I know people are going to roll their eyes because I always do Absolutely. this. Halima is <laughs> related to everybody in the whole of Africa. So, so I really she, um, yeah, she's been, she's been completely honest because mm -hmm. uh, actually from time immemorial, <laughs> I don't know when this happened, but mm -hmm. um, according to the history and the information that we have passed down from people to people um pe the yoruba speaking part of um kogi state they actually came from kwara state you see yeah so they migrated oh, from so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they migrated from kwara state down to kogi and then down to um ekiti wow. um, so you see them in that line that they are actually closely related in terms of proximity to one another so um, you can see the motion <laughs> how the people walk down and you know how everything happened yeah she's right absolutely right <laughs> oh thank you so much thank you okay we'll give you a pass right. on this one just this one <laughs> 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 okay, okay so can you oh, okay yes let's, let's do ahead. let's do an introduction to this subject first for our listeners who really have no background right so yoruba or ede yoruba is a language spoken in West Africa, primarily in southwestern and central Nigeria. It is spoken by the ethnic Yoruba people. The number of Yoruba speakers is roughly 50 million, plus about 5 million second language speakers. As a pluricentric language, it is primarily spoken in a dialectal area spanning Nigeria and Benin, with smaller migrated communities in Côte d'Ivoire, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia. Yoruba vocabulary is also used in the Afro-Brazilian religion known as Candomblé in the Caribbean religion of Santeria in the form of the liturgical, I don't know about the pronunciation of this, Lukumi language and various Afro-American religions of North America. So yes, there is actually a huge um, or a sizable Yoruba population in parts of South America as well. Yeah, uh, it's super huge. and um, They even take the culture like <laughs> to the next level they practice like everything you know they have the ifa 
the traditions, you know, the Orishas, they really um, handle that culture thing very well. Yeah. And you see them, most of them white, some guys are black, you know, but like ethnically, um, I think it's it's fresh. I like it. Yeah. So can you give us like a summary about like the history and evolution of the Yoruba language in Nigeria? Okay. So um, we're not talking about this like in the whole because I think it's uh, it's very, very deep, right? <clears throat> I don't think one person has the full history because everything is written in like different parts, you know, but I think we what we'll be doing is just, you know, diving into the history of, you know, the, the language and, you know, the way it has evolved in Western Nigeria as we know it and probably even Western Africa because it's beyond the borders, right? So, yeah, um, Yoruba language is very, very well, <laughs> widely, it's a widely spread um, language, right, that is spoken in, like, lots of countries, not just Nigeria alone, but predominantly um, it's uh, spoken in parts of Nigeria um, and, you know, a little bit to the south-south as well, because... There are people from um, Wari, who we call the Shakiris, too, who speak um, Yoruba languages. And, um, yeah, they are, the history is very simple. Like, um, it's been passed down from generation to generation, um, starting from Odudua and, you know, <laughs> all the mythical stories that have been told about how the culture... Um, evolved and you know the connection to the people in a those states and um i mean the benin people obviously and then you know how different wars have been fought and how we expanded and moved over like through all the regions and yeah um i, I think yoruba is super popular and everybody in the world um should know about this <laughs> this particular language yeah I, I i'm not going to like i said i'm not going to go too deep into it i mean if you want to i want to be very basic about uh, my explanations and um yeah yeah that's that's what i know um i mean we only told the things that have been passed on and you know nobody was there to record and say like maybe we had like like cameras or something that recorded our ancestors when they were practicing all the ifas and all the things you know but today we still see them um doing all of that um but yoruba culture is super super unique particularly the language um it's very very expressive it's much deeper than english um there are certain words that you would um, expressing Yoruba that you find very difficult to translate to English. You know, it just basically shows the depth of understanding and the wisdom that has existed um, within this particular culture from time. So, yeah, let me just stop there. <laughs> I like that your passion or your like, interest really comes across when you're talking about it. So I want I want to kind of segue here. Because when you're talking about how everyone should know about Yoruba language, and yeah. it's there's kind of a, I don't know if the word now is renaissance, it's Beyonce that's putting that word in my head, you know, or a, <laughs> <laughs> there's kind of a, a, a resurgence of, of Yoruba language as in pop culture these days, and not just in local pop culture, you know, not limited yeah. to West Africa, but we're kind of going global, especially in terms of music in that yes. you know with all these collaborations with international artists a lot of them um have like songs with yoruba language in them yes and speaking about that you know like our culture is heavily embedded in music you know and it's it's so beautiful because you know like for every single event that happens we have a song <laughs> for it you know, we have the talking drum, right? Basically, you're speaking Yoruba and the drum is able to speak Yoruba with you. That is super fantastic, if you ask me. Um, yes, it, there's been a, a great move, you know, um, in terms of how um, the culture has been propagated in the world today, 
um, true music, Afrobeat, and predominantly Afrobeat artists are Yoruba people, predominantly, and they mostly speak in Yoruba language, uh, Pidgin and English. Just a little bit of that population, you know, um, do their music in Igbo, right? So um, it's very, very, very obvious that, you know, the music has moved on over and crossed to, you know, over the Atlantic, to India, to America, to Europe, and topping charts. I mean, it's it's just amazing. One day I watched one of, you know, these shows that one Afrobeat artist had in Netherlands. And I I don't want to mention the name. <laughs> or should I mention the name? Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, Bonner Boy. And I, I could see people literally speaking Yoruba with him. I mean, they don't understand what he was saying right but you know they were singing along and it was such a beauty to watch so um yes afrobeat has been a carrier of um yoruba music and yoruba language as well so because most people are very curious and be like oh what music what language is bonaboy singing in what language is whiskey singing what is he saying you know people are always curious and they always ask because the music is catchy and then you hear them say stuff like oh it's yoruba yoruba you hear them saying it in so many different ways white guys and how they mispronounce <laughs> our words i'd be like oh yoruba 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 <laughs> You know, it's super hilarious. And yeah, I mean, I mean, that's 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 a huge part uh, that you mentioned of how it's perceived. But I, I believe that people should know about Yoruba because of that. Yeah. I think it's very interesting how you said, you know, Yoruba is musical. I've always thought that it's a musical sounding language um, just because of like the tonal, uh, it's tonality, the word, because you know yeah. how you know, things go up and down with those armies that you use to signal tone. Yeah. And even when yeah. it's just being casually spoken, sometimes it can sound like somebody's singing. You know, even when they're like yeah. doing chants, like orikis and things, they sound very musical in a way. Yes, yes, oriki. Like, it's amazing. Like, I, I wish everybody could like have a feel of, you know, what we have in terms of the depth of our love for music and the love for greeting people you know and the tonal or tonality like you said of the language you know it's it's very dynamic and it's very distinct like you know that this person is saying something that is that belongs to people speaking in this particular region so like like i'm about to go into you know um as we talk about this um, the Yoruboid languages, those are about 14 related languages that sound like or that originated from Yoruba. You know, they are they also have that tonality that you mentioned. So, um, yes, tonality is super fantastic in, in music. It's that's what brings life into into music. You've been able to, you know, enter different tones and and, you know, sound amazing, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me just stop there, yeah. I think it's interesting that you and Ceci think um, Yoruba is a musical language. I don't know. I just think every language is musical. What do you guys think? Because, I mean, I can see how Igbos would think the language too is musical. How, like, Hausa people as well. How, like, people that Sorry, speak Arabic. Hausa people? <laughs> yeah, like, I just feel like every language has, like, some elements of music in it. I think you're right, actually. Mm. Um. I think, yes, languages do generally sound musical, especially when it's a foreign language. But mm -hmm. I feel like the reason that maybe Wale and I think of Yoruba specifically as musical is because we, um, maybe it's because it's a language we hear often. So we just, I don't know. I've always thought I'm that it sounds biased. musical. No, yeah. No, no, it might I'm be a little bit biased. of bias, but that's okay. Yeah. But then I also think when you think about the chants, like I don't know a lot of languages, or perhaps this is, you know, just because we don't know. But Yoruba language has those chants and those orikis, which are like a specific part of, you know, the culture that just yeah. seem like a unique I thing. You're right. So the reason why I don't I don't want to so I, I know that it might feel like um you know we are being biased, right? I don't think I don't think so. Because for example, 
I can't see myself singing in Chinese, right? I'm not a Chinese person, right? Or Korean or, you know, Russian. I feel like in this region, especially African countries in general, this is an African thing, right? Maybe if you leave, you know, like maybe you leave the shores of Africa, you go to like Europe, you know, things are going to sound like really different. Yes, they do music, but... The way we do music, we do it like it's an art. There's a reason why we are pushing boundaries in music today. There's a reason why people want to listen to us. I mean, there are other cultures that do music. There are other people who sing and, and whatnot. But there's a reason why right now that that musical thing, that musical agenda is really, really agending, if you ask me. <laughs> a couple years ago, that was like Latin countries. So I get your point. I just don't agree with it because, again, like, it, and I think you should, it, it's a bias, clearly, because I watch a lot of Korean dramas and arguably <laughs> the language is very um, poetic and is artistic and whatever. So I just think that, of course, I agree your bias is a musical language, but I think every language is musical. Is it, I think I, that's just what I think. That's I agree with you, Halima, that every language is musical. But that does not... I mean, today we're talking about a specific language. <laughs> so it's not to say that other languages are not musical as well. For example, I love K-drama and I like some k-pop songs as well <laughs> not you know they they are all interesting i like latin music i like lots of different types of music but yeah, yoruba music yeah but yoruba um yoruba language is a musical sounding language as well as all the other ones and we're kind of focusing on what you know are the unique aspects about it that make it musical not to say that yeah. other languages are not musical as well <laughs> yeah exactly. oh yeah bollywood movies <laughs> i love them <laughs> Um, so while you said something about Yoruboid languages, what, what are those? Like, what is Yoruboid language? Well, am I even saying it properly? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. I mean, I mean, yes, you are. Yoruboid languages, I mean, languages that are similar to Yoruba or originated from Yoruba. So, I mean, Yoruboid is, is a mega group of 14 related languages, um, and it has the Igala group of dialects uh, in South Central Nigeria, then the Edekiri group, which is spoken across Togo, Ghana, and um, Republic of Benin, and of course, here in Nigeria. And then the third band is the Ichekiri. The name Yoruba, obviously, like I said before, is just the group of uh, languages that are similar, uh, related in terms of um, how they are spoken and you know the meaning of the words um however yoruba of of course is the is the largest and the most widely spoken member um and then that's followed by the kiri guys from togo ghana Benin, and then we have the shakiri people a key thing to note is that igala is super um, important in this because it's spoken by 1.8 million people mm, cool so um these like bands of languages are they different from dialects uh yes so in in a way in a way they are different but similar if there's anything like dissimilar i think that would be the word to um, describe it so um the reason why they do that is because of certain words that are pronounced and then the et etymology of those words um is what really uh, makes makes it very obvious that they are they are related right <clears throat> so for example um there are similar words um in shakiri that um resonate the same meaning in um yoruba like when you want to talk about uh god for example in or gods for example in Yoruba language, you would say maybe like Orisha, do you get? And um, in Shakiri, it's Orisha. So, you know, like that similarity is um, part of what I'm trying to uh, explain in this context. So, but um, the other languages, like, because early last year, I traveled to Togo and Benin Republic. And I got into a very, very funny situation where 
I was stranded and I couldn't get cash because my card did not work, you know, over there. And I was just going from store to store and people were speaking French to me. And I was just like, oh my God, how am I going to survive here, right? And then my friend just says, why, do, why don't we try Yoruba? These people don't understand English, but they speak French, but they also do business with people in Nigeria, right? So I go on to speak Yoruba and then they were responding to me. Although there was a very, very slight difference in the way they were speaking it but i could understand them so clearly they were speaking um a different dialect of yoruba so yeah definitely i would say all of them are dialects if you ask me um generally speaking they're all dialects i might not understand totally what someone who's speaking in Sh shakiri is saying but i can feel that they are saying something related to yoruba the same thing with igala as well um in Igala, when you want to say child, you say Oma. And then um, in Yoruba, it's Omo. Do you understand? And then for mother, you say Iye in Igala. But in Yoruba, you say Iya. So it's just E and A, just that slight change. Uh, yes, yeah, so they're related. And a key thing to also note is my own dialect, which is um, also a bit different. Um Sometimes people who speak normal Yoruba might find it hard to understand what I'm saying, but they will be able to pick uh, some key things from it. So I think it's interesting that you call these languages Yoruboid languages, which kind of implies that like they come from Yoruba, right? But is there evidence that these languages come from Yoruba rather than the other way around? You know? Yes, there is. Um and I'm just going to speak to that on like two grounds, right? The first is the fact that um, these people, based on the account of the story of their origin, they make reference to the core uh, foundations of how Yoruba started and where it started. And the same thing is what you would have in South America as well. Um, in terms of the history of how the stories have been told, um, the stories of how Yoruba started, they all share the same story. So that's one. Um, the second one is obviously through the languages, right? And um, how how we speak and communicate. Um, you find out that a lot of these other languages that are Yoruboid, um, they tend to understand the most basic form of Yoruba. To me, that's that's this is just my perspective. The first one is backed by data, right? <laughs> but the second one is just me talking and saying that, you know, because all these other languages can relate to Yoruba as the core of you know what they're speaking. Um, I I would say that Yoruba precedes them. Um, I'm just curious when you say that um you did you understood a bit of what the people in Togo were speaking, and you understood that it was Yoruba. Would you say that it's like a different Yoruba accent or was it a different Yoruba dialect? Okay, so um, which part? Is it when I went to Togo or... Yeah, it... mm -hmm. you know, like how Nigerians and Ghan Ghanaians, for example, we all speak English, but we speak it in different ways, right? Is that the same thing with Yoruba? Like we're literally saying the same thing, but we just have different ways of saying it. Or is it like, uh, is the structure different? Does my question make sense? Yes, yes, it makes perfect sense. Okay, so what I noticed, I noticed this in Benin Republic, actually. Um, so there are two classes of, you know, these guys. The first one uh, are the guys that have moved over from Nigeria. And basically, because they've been doing businesses, right, they're able to pick up the language and basically speak it, right? The second, the second band, the language they are speaking is... Is Yoruboid, right? But it's 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 different, just just in a very 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 little way. Like, um, and they call them the bear people. So you can call them for uh, bear people or the farm people. They have Yoruba tonality. So this language too is also part of those Yoruboid languages that I mentioned, that are majorly um, tonal in nature. That, that is similar to um, Yoruba based on tonality, but not exactly based on, um, you know, the meaning of the language, right? So uh, 
you'll be hearing them say stuff like Fongbe. You know, it sounds like Yoruba. You know, Vodon. This the the way it's the way it sounds, it feels like you're talking up <laughs> you're talking to somebody who is Yoruba, right? Or who is speaking Yoruba. Yeah, those are the two those are the two ways, uh, right, that you can use to uh, identify in quotes. Mm, that's so interesting. But I mean, um, in in general, like, um, these guys, especially these four people, um, uh, they are the ones who propagate this voodoo culture, right? Which we also have <laughs> in Yoruba land. Right, it's that voodoo culture is from them, and that also spread across Togo and Ghana as well. That's the worship of, you know, um, traditional gods and all of that, which is like I said, which is similar to what we have in terms of cultural practices too as well. That similarity is there, is there as well. Like, uh, you talk about how they worship animals, the same things that happen in Yoruba land too, how they use animals for sacrifices and, and all of that and whatnot. Yeah, th those cultural practices are consistent amongst these people who are Yoruboid, um, yeah, from my definition. Mm, oh, okay, that's really cool. Um, Just a quick one. You know how, like, the... I think people from Ijesha or something... They speak Yoruba, but it's kind of different. So is that also like your Yoruboid? Is that like a strain of Yoruboid or is that just a different Yoruba dialect? So they are they're all classified as Yoruboid, both the ones mm -hmm. that sound like actual Yoruba, mm -hmm. you know, or just a little mix, you know, and those that um are not exactly speaking Yoruba, just one or two few words and just the tonality. They are all Yoruboid languages. And it's nice to say, uh, nice to hear you say Ijesha, right? Because um, in my own dialect, which is Kaba, or in quotes, Okun people, um, our, there, there's also this, there's, there's also dif slight differences, um, you know, <laughs> within the way we pronounce, even in that Okun land, right? You hear people speak. They're like the difference is is very funny. It's just interesting because even though we have those differences, when you hear someone speak, you kind of get what they are saying. And I'm talking about this not from the perspective of just someone who speaks Yoruba, but but from the perspective of someone who is from Okun land, right? So you can get and understand what each other person is saying, but the way it's said is also different. So yeah, I would say that. Um, Generally, they are all Yoruboid languages, and that is how you know historians and the guys who study languages have decided to categorize them. Very interesting. So you are categorizing Yoruboid as both languages that are not exactly Yoruba but have similarities to it, and you are also categorizing dialects of Yoruba language under Yoruboid as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So for for people who don't really know much about it, basically what we've what we're saying is there are similar languages to Yoruba spoken um within parts of um Nigeria and West Africa and outside of it as well. Um, but they're not quite the same language because there are major similarities in like maybe spelling of words and and you know consonants and vowels used. And then there are also dialects of Yoruba within regions in West Africa. For example, in Nigeria, there are many different like states and regions where Yorubas are, and each region has their own dialects. So like there are different ways that they pronounce words. I mean, I think it's a universal spelling, at least within like if you were writing the Yoruba, it would be the same writing within like Nigeria, but the way that somebody from Ijesha will pronounce it and the way that somebody from Ikiti will pronounce it will be different, right? Yeah, very different. Um, I've seen people from South America, right, speak Yoruba. The way they speak it, <laughs> it can get you lost and confused as a Yoruba person, right? Because of the time that they've spent in isolation and how it has evolved with, you know, the people who have absorbed it as their culture um, 
a lot of tonality that originally when the slave guys got there, um, I'm sure it would have changed, right, um, over time. So it's it's just something that I always want to point out. Um, I don't think that we really do uh, ca- count them as part of us most of the times when we are t- talking and teaching about it in schools, right? Um, trust me, throughout my time in school, there was never a mention of the guys in South America and, you know, <laughs> what they do uh, and the kind of culture they practice, the fact that it, they also do the whole Orisha thing. I got to find that out on YouTube. <laughs> and then I just entered that warm and I started wormhole and I started watching and watching and watching. And, you know, it was uh, super interesting for me to discover. So I'm just saying, I'm just saying that too, that, you know, let's not forget those guys there too. Yeah. And I just wanted to add that um, while the spelling of some Yoruba words can be pronounced in different ways, they're not always like read the same way. So for example, like I was writing in the chat in Ekiti, instead of like yeah for mother, they write and they say a year. So that's the thing. Really? Yeah. And then I just wanted to add another thing. I feel like with the whole concept of like Yoruba dialect, something I find interesting, right, is, okay, so while I'm from a part of Kwara State that is considered under, well, it's, there's, the, there's a whole argument there, but most people consider it under the Yoruba kingdom, right? They don't actually speak Yoruba, Yoruba. They speak Igomina. And that could be, I, I might be butchering it because I don't know anything about our language. And again, when people speak Igumina, it's not like they're speaking Yoruba because I barely understand what they're saying. So I don't know if that's considered Yoruba or if that's just like a dialect of Yoruba. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm not sure if you originated from the Yoruba language or if because we're under the Yoruba kingdom, we're just considered Yoruba. It's Igumina. It's spelled I-G-B-O. Yes. Yes. You're very, you're very, very right. So I just looked that up, right? I've heard of it before. And the last time I heard about it was about some kind of war that happened, you know, within these people and some other ethnic guys. But what I'm seeing on, on online right now is that the Igomina people are uh, also called Ogona or Igona. <laughs> and they are a subgroup of the Yoruba ethnic group, right? So um, definitely it's Yoruba. Like I said, it's possible for you to, you know, um, hear me speak my dialect and not get what I'm saying, right? (laughs) But when I speak my dialect, I know that it's super related to Yoruba because of some of the words that I know in my dialect that have, like, strong similarities to, like, the average normal standard Yoruba words. So... Yeah, um, Igbona is definitely Yoruba, Igbomina rather, um, from your from your word, um, and I'm sure if I if I probably hear them speak, I will just figure it out that hmm, this these guys are kinda kinda like Yoruba, you know, in the way they are speaking and the interpretation of what they are saying. Mm-hmm. And there's another thing that I find interesting. So where I'm from, we also shared the state with Igala people. And now, a lot of words in my dialect, which is just a bit different from Yoruba, is very, very similar to Igala. But if I hear Igala people speaking, like speaking normally, I, I don't understand Igala in its entirety, right? <laughs> but I can tell that this person is speaking Igala. And I also relate to the fact that the words in it are, are similar. <laughs> Um, let me just interject to plug something, guys. So um, when Wally was talking about South America and the Yoruba cultural links there, please make sure you read our Rire article. Um, it's a recently published one titled Yoruba Traditions and Religions in South America. So you can find it um, on the Rire website, rire.com. Read it, okay? And if you guys have anything that you want to contribute to this as well, you can type it up and submit it on rire.com. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing all of that, Swali. Um, what would you say is the most beautiful part of the Yoruba culture to you? I understand this is subjective. So to you, what exactly do you enjoy about like speaking the language or like 
just the general Yoruba culture? Yeah, um, I think the culture in itself is the most beautiful thing. I think that the part of the culture that I mostly resonate with, that I like, and I think is the most beautiful part, right, is is the music and um, the way we are ceremonial people <laughs> in, in, the, in the context of how we interact with ourselves, how we throw parties, how we love to celebrate like every single milestone or every single thing that happens. We love to celebrate. We love to party. And it's the same among guys, you know, who are related um, and who have like um, affiliations with us. We have beco- We have made that part of our culture somewhat contagious to even other tribes and you know we are known for our oambe anything party anything celebration anything greetings we love to talk we love to greet eku orire eku this eku that you know and we go to parties we share food we love food we love to take care of people we love we are hospitable people um i think that's 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 the part that i find um super super interesting about yoruba people and the yoruba culture as a whole mm-hmm. Ceci, what about you what do you like most about the yoruba culture or language about the yoruba language or culture mm, about the yoruba culture i have to agree with Wally. i think that that's what most people would say is the is the like <laughs> like hospitality the gregariousness which is a, a unnecessarily large word but just because your bars are just very larger than life i tend to find at least the ones i i know um they just you know they are very hospitable and they are just always ready to party to, to you know to do whatever so i think that's great and i also really like Something that I have noticed is that, you know, Yorubas are particularly religiously tolerant Um, in terms, you can find, you know, mostly a Yoruba family where they go to the mosque and they go to church. You know, when it's, when it's uh, Salah, they will post picture, you know, at the mosque and when it's Christmas, they will post picture in church and <laughs> there's no like conflict between that. Yes, <laughs> that's very true. We are very, very hospitable, like and it's part of the reason why you know people were like raising concerns about you know all those ethnic issues that we're having in terms of uh, security and how you know certain people of course based on the news certain people have been attacked in their villages and you know exposed to danger because of how hospitable they've been to you know that particular set uh, tribe or you know whatever you know so but um uh, in general i think that's that's a highlight of who we are and uh, it shows everywhere if you have friends in other countries that can tell you something they know about um yoruba people i'm sure that that's probably what part of the things that they will give you as 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 a description of you know who we are mm, interesting i hear that we're hospitable but i have a thing against yoruba men so the hospitable part is very, very questionable. So I don't think that's questionable. Out there. <laughs> Be because... very careful. <laughs> you're a man. I don't, I don't. Anyway, it's a personal thing. So I just don't advocate those people. But anyway. <laughs> Ah, for me, okay. what I like the most about the Yoruba culture is like the insults. I feel like we're really good at insulting <laughs> people. Like I it's agree. so flawless. Like I really love it. I enjoy oh my it god, so you're much. very right. <laughs> yeah, like oh, all those things very right. and everything. Yeah, I really love Yoruba. Actually, so, that is so very true. But you can't just you can't. Okay, so I agree that Yoruba men have an international reputation as. <laughs> have a a certain international reputation however we can't use that to to say you know that doesn't mean yoruba people are hospitable as a group um Mm. they are hospitable you know they could not have gotten that reputation without being hospitable in the first place it's just like later on Mm -hmm. that's when the problem i mean there's a whole bunch of people on tiktok that traumatized from Uh 
No comments. No comments on that. Wale, I mean, we're not tainting you with that brush, okay? You. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a quick question. So, you know, like the Yoruba that we all speak, where did that originate from? Like the general one that, I don't know, like, would I say the modern day Yoruba, but the one that most people speak, where did that come from? Yeah, that that one came from um, Ilefe. Oh. Osho State. Yes. Osho State is like the bedrock of <laughs> Yoruba culture. Everything from the groove, you know, even in terms of hierarchy and um, all of that from the people who are termed as leaders of Yoruba, like the highest, highest ranking Yoruba king now is from that particular area. So, yeah, um, that's, that's, that's the place, Ilefe. And that's where the Oni of Ife is, you know, so... And a lot of people take pilgrimage rather to to that location to go and worship and to take the water and it's like it's like the Jerusalem of of you know of Yoruba people, if you put it that way. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for coming, Wally. This has been a very, very interesting episode. Very. Um. Yeah, so where can we find you? Like, do you want to tell people where they can find you? Your Twitter, Instagram, anything? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, on, on Instagram, it's at Walixo, which is W-A-L-I-X-O on Instagram. And then on Twitter, you can find me on at Ajiboye. Wale, A J I B O Y E W A L E. No space, no caps, just straightforward. Ajiboye Wale um, on Twitter. Yeah, that's where you can find me. <laughs> yeah, and he's a tech bro, as you heard at the like start of this episode, but he's also Yoruba, so I'm helping yeah. you people in advance. <laughs> <laughs> so go in oh at your God. own. <laughs> No, no, Wale. Okay, you know what? I can't vouch for anybody else. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, That's I'm just cool. joking. Well, kind of joking. Yeah. Not fully, really not joking. But yeah, thank you so much for listening, everyone. We've come to the end of this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, share, stay notified. I don't know, tell people. Oh, yeah, fine. And then yeah, check out our website at orire.com. Orire is spelled O-R-I-I-R-E dot com. On Instagram, we're orire underscore Africa. Again, orire is spelled O-R-I-I-R-E, then underscore Africa. On Twitter, that's the same handle. And yeah, talk to you guys, I think, in two weeks. Yes. Bye. And if you want to come on the podcast, don't forget to send us a message. We would love to have you on here. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Odabo. Odabo. Odabo.